I'm here on my talk show, having the time of my life. I'm also here with my guest, who's just outside of the camera frame, also smiling and laughing and drinking a cup of water. Well, welcome to episode seven of The Joe Pontillo Show, brought to you by no one. Absolutely no one. No one cares. No one supports it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, family. It's brought to you by family. Throw up a picture of Vin Diesel and let's get this stupid show started. All right, so it's been a while since the last episode. Uh, we had Matt Vita on, um, who I know uh, had been mentioned in a previous episode. Someone maybe had a problem with his beard. Long story short, we won't be having him on again. Uh, me and Matt did go on the road last weekend. We had some uh, great shows. We had a great show Friday night in Blends Falls at the Park Theater, which is a great, adorable little town um, that can come to a screeching halt because they have a, uh, a drive circle or a traffic circle roundabout. Either way, they're very menacing, very confusing. People often get stuck on them, sometimes for hours. Uh, so yeah, that does cause a lot of traffic, a lot of problems in the town. Uh, but we had a great time. Some woman uh, the next morning at the hotel with probably the biggest crucifix you've ever seen uh, kept telling us how she was Jesus' favorite, but also we were his favorites. So pick one. You, come on. <laughs> And um, I think if Jesus is going to come back, it's just going to be for one night only, and he's going to judge a roast battle, and then go on his way again. So that's kind of my thoughts on religion. Saturday night, we did a show in New Bedford, uh, Massachusetts, with our guy uh, Tegan, uh, in a venue that uh, was really excited to do comedy. Seemingly very much enjoyed the show. Want to do it again. They just have to do it in a different room. They kind of just set the microphone up in front of the bar and just went, have fun. And, uh, you know, people actually came to see me. I had some fans show up to the show and they had to stand the whole time. Um, but it, it was actually a really fun night and fun show. Um, especially once I decided to just sort of give up and, and just trash the place and trash the situation to rousing applause. Um, some people came up to me after the show actually, and said that I, uh, remind them of if Gilbert Gottfried and Jerry Seinfeld had a baby, probably the ugliest baby you've ever seen in your life. Uh, so it's a little insulting, but I think they meant more of a performance standpoint. When I started doing comedy, everyone told me I looked and sounded like Ray Romano. And uh, I think I grew out of that. I also wear less plaid now and talk less about how much I hate my wife and family. Ah! Every, everyone, just your kids, they suck. And then your, your family, they suck. And your wife, oh, I just want to kill her. Comedy. Uh, rest in peace, 2024. Uh, so that's, uh, that's fine. So I've, I've multiple times in the last few years gotten either Seinfeld or Gilbert Gottfried. I didn't understand the Gilbert Gottfried thing until I saw a picture of myself on stage kind of looking like this. And I was like, oh no, there it is. Um, I actually had worked with Gilbert Gottfried once many years ago at uh, McGuire's on Long Island. I hosted the show. It was right after he had gotten fired from Aflac. Remember that? He made a uh, off-colored joke about the uh, tsunami in Japan. And they fired him and then just replaced him with another guy who sounds exactly the same. Uh, sorry, sir. You have brought shame and dishonor to the voice of a talking duck. Get lost. Everything's very stupid, but as long as they didn't write him out of... Uh, Aladdin. That would have been devastating. And then what do you do? Replace him with Christopher Plummer or something? That's a joke from five years ago. But uh, yeah, Gilbert Gottfried, uh, very shy offstage. 
uh, didn't want to... Well, basically, as the host, it was my job to sell his merchandise after the show. So uh, I had to stand there awkwardly next to him, like his bodyguard, and people would walk up, make eye contact with him, and go, how much for the books? How much for the DVDs? And he would just kind of, like, tragically turn towards me, and I'd have to be like, yeah, the DVDs are 30, and the, you know, the books are 40. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, and, you know, I had a great show, so people were also coming up to me and telling me, you know, how good I was. So I would get distracted a few times, and uh, one time I, I, I saw him very broken, had to, you know, tell someone how much something cost. Uh, <laughs> and of course I felt terrible. And at the end of the night, he handed me a $10 bill. So, um, meet your heroes. Not really a hero, but just meet some, just meet anybody, for God's sakes. Um, a lot has happened in the last few weeks. So, I, I don't know if I can pull this, there's nothing to do. I just, I want to go back in time and stop myself from signing up for any political email whatsoever. I've done very little politics-wise in my life. I think one time I wrote a, an angry email to like Chuck Schumer about uh, net neutrality. Remember net neutrality? That was a thing we were all upset about for a week. Whatever happened with that? I'm pretty sure it went into effect and nothing really changed. Or, you know, we're all being scammed. I'm not sure, but whatever. Um, and I, I, you know, I signed up for like Bernie Sanders, our revolutions mailing list. I thought I unsubscribed for everything. Turns out I didn't. Not only that, I'm getting text messages almost every day from the dumbest sounding people who are just like, oh my God, Joe, Barbara Streisand just destroyed the Trump family. The woman who cloned her dogs, who gives a shit? Uh, and then you get another text from a number that's like, you know, oh my God, Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert just teamed up to tell you that democracy is on the line. Ha ha ha, so funny. You really, you gotta vote the way that the celebrities or the late night show hosts vote. Otherwise they won't have you on the show. Or, you know, they'll be very sad next time they make $6 million uh, filming a terrible movie. Please, I, don't, I can't get out of, what am I gonna do, change my number? It's too late, it's too good of a number. I can't do it. Flash my number on... No, I'm not putting my number on this. Yet. We'll get to that. Maybe by, like, episode 12, this will be, like, a post-taped call-in show or something. I haven't really decided. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. I uh, I would like to sue uh, Bernie Sanders, <laughs> who, A, not only took my money uh, only for, like, you know, three weeks later to be like, Okay, I'm dropping out! Vote for Hillary! And, you know, and then gave my info to every single person on the planet. You know, I even occasionally get a text from, like, a Trump person. I don't know how that happened. You know why? Because they're all the same. They're all connected. They're all sharing phone numbers. Ah, this guy looks like he won't get mad at a text from the right wing. Ha! Ah, you know, uh, maybe, uh, but whatever. Politics is so ridiculous. Everyone's brains needs, needs a reworking. Um, you know, here's the thing I didn't know. Apparently, not wanting to get charged $15 every time you drive your car into Manhattan is a right-wing viewpoint. <laughs> I guess you're conservative now. You don't want to pointlessly give money to the city that's already taken so much from you. Um, also, oh, what a weird week. I had to briefly, uh, be a fan of, uh, I can't even say her name, the governor of New York, Kathy Hockel? Hockley? Uh, geez, like we went from, uh, you know, Italian Cuomo looking like with his leather face to, to, uh, someone who looks like she stole the face off of someone else <laughs> because she didn't have, uh, any human skin. It's, it's really gross, but she shot down, uh, congestion pricing, which, uh, you know, obviously I've spoken about on the show. It's a really dumb idea, and it's dumb for a lot of reasons. Never mind the fact that people, you know, like me, like people from Jersey, people from the suburbs who have to go into Manhattan 
to do whatever. I sometimes just drive through the city because I have to go to another state. Um, <clears throat> you know, shouldn't have to pay $15 just to barely be in the city. Uh, it hurts so many people, um, but it's driven by these like, you know, pseudo environmentalists who just are completely out of touch with working people. Like they just, a lot of them look like they're 12 years old. They all look sickly and just look like they cry all the time. And it's, it's like the same person over and over again. You know, they want less cars in New York City, which I agree with. I do agree with that. I'm 100% on board with that. There are too many people. But the problem isn't that uh, these people who work in New York City and have to drive through New York City, it's not their fault. It's the fact that real estate developers look at New York City, which is, there's no more room. And they're like, yeah, we'll find room for like another million more people. Stop. We reached capacity in New York City in like 2007, 1998. It's over. Pick a new place to ruin. Go, <laughs> there's the, you know, remember COVID 2020, early 2021, maybe even two, there was nobody here. We were fine. We were thriving. Why did everyone come back? With this, is there something going on in the city I don't know about that we need to be here for? There's no reason to be here. Stop moving here, you worthless hipster morons who have too much money. Stop having money, you know. So, like, you have all these sickos on, uh, you know, the internet who are very pro-congestion pricing. And, uh, you know, it's like, hey, do you want me, do you want to pay for me to go in the city? for like a year because if you're going to cover me you know go forth with it uh you know and they're so out of touch they'll say things like oh well maybe you should just get a better job even if i had a good a good job where i made six figures a year i still would think this is stupid uh it, it's really so utterly ridiculous then what about the people who live in manhattan within the zone where congestion pricing would be taking place every time they got in their car and moved it would they just automatically get charged $15? Like, oh, I got to move it for alternate side parking. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, trucks. They wanted to charge trucks $24 or $36 to be in Manhattan. Who's paying for that? The companies that own the trucks, how are they going to get that money back? Oh, they're going to charge their customers more money. Then those places are going to charge their customers more money. Everyone loses. This is a dumb idea. And then the one thing that people are, are like dead set on is, oh yeah, but the billion dollars in revenue this will create will go to the MTA who are going to fix the trains, make new subways. No, they're not. Have you met the MTA? The MTA is one of the most corrupt organizations on the planet. You think they've just been waiting around for like this magic billion dollars to be like, oh yes, finally. The billion dollars we needed to fix all the problems. Never mind the other billions of dollars we have. It was this particular billion dollars that was going to make us magically make the trains run. Meanwhile, it's a weekend in New York City and none of the fucking trains are running. So great stuff. Don't drive. It causes pollution. Uh, it causes traffic, congestion. Fine. No trains. Ah, well, I guess I'll just do nothing. You move to New York City to do nothing. This, these are the same people who were like pro-COVID lockdowns lasting for like three years. Because, oh, wow, I don't have to go into work. Which is fine. People should be able to work from home. But people should also be able to, you know, go outside and live their lives. So stop imposing your weird, creepy worldview on everyone else. Meet some people and, you know, meet some actual people. Not everyone that lives in your bubble which is probably like the future of New York City living. We're just all going to be living in bubbles where we just float around and talk to like-minded people. Like, I have a horrible opinion. Me too. Let's be friends inside the bubble. Whoop, I'm floating away to another person who shares my fear. <laughs> so I hate to go back to politics because I think it's just such a stupid uh, situation. Um, but I think, okay, so... Um, you know, Donald Trump. Remember him? Uh, <laughs> he's uh, he he's had all these court cases going um, since, uh, you know, he stopped being president. And, uh, you know, here's my view on Donald Trump. Uh, I think 
because I think everything is fake anyway. I think they should have just let him win in 2020 because it's 2024. He'd be done. He'd be leaving office in six, seven months. And then that's it. Uh, now, instead, he's going he's been talked about nonstop for the last four years. He's running for president again. Even if he goes to jail, he could win. And then he's just going to be in the public consciousness again for another like four to eight years. It's please like this is how bad a shape America is in where like they have to create this like political boogeyman and then they have no uh, new ideas. So they just rerun it again with the same guy. And, <laughs> you know, all presidents are horrifically corrupt. I happen to think uh, that as a president, Donald Trump was kind of just baseline corrupt. I think as a real estate guy in New York City, probably belongs in jail. Because <laughs> you know? uh, I think anybody involved in real estate, especially in New York City, should just go straight to jail. I mean, let's be real. Um, but I think as a president, he was just baseline corrupt. And like some of the things he actually did that are crimes, everyone does, so they can't do anything about it. So they go after him because he paid off a porn star who, uh, God, I hope she doesn't go on tour for stand-up comedy again. Uh, no offense, I'm sure she's a lovely woman, but <laughs> I'm not a porn star. I'm, is she a strip? I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. This is how stupid everything is. And this is how stupid stand-up comedy is. What, this person who's not even a comedian, but they want to stand on our stage for an hour? Yeah, give him a weekend. Please, come on. Um, it's just, like, really demoralizing. My favorite uh, response to, uh, you know, Trump, because he, 34 counts of crimes. Uh, <laughs> whatever. And uh, so, yeah, he might go to jail. And if he does, it could be 48 hours. It could be six months. It could be 10 minutes. Um, he could be running the country from in jail. There's so many ways this could go. Um, he, uh, people then, you know, the people on the right or Trump supporters we're all over the internet saying like, oh, you just gave him the election. Thanks for making him more popular than ever, which A, probably true, but also B, what if the reverse happened and he was found not guilty? Would he be less popular? <laughs> like, would he lose popularity? Would he have less of a chance to win? Like, would all his supporters go, ah, he sucks now. He's not a criminal. I don't like him anymore. He's boring. He's just like everybody else. Um... Speaking of criminals, uh, the, uh, the Mets, who are in London right now, uh, they were losing horrifically, and uh, the season is like on the brink. You know, every year, baseball, for me, starts very hopeful, and then by like, I don't know, mid are we in June? Yeah, mid-June, you kind of get to a point where it's just like, man, forget, I hope they lose 110 games, I hope City Field, something terrible happens. Uh, I hope the owner gets indicted. He's probably a criminal too. Let's be real. Um, you know, and everybody's trying to figure out how to fix the Mets. And, uh, my thought is I think it's time to just get rid of everybody, like everybody from top to bottom. Everybody needs to go. The need new mascots, change the name of the stadium. Uh, you know, new announcers like, okay, you like Gary Cohen, and Howie Rose, you know what? They've absorbed too much losing, especially Howie Rose. He also calls Islanders games. Forget it. That guy is filled with losses. Um, Gary Cohen, uh, I used to like, but man, what a jinx. Gary Cohen is the type of guy who will be, you know, doing play-by-play -play for a Mets game and say like, well, the Mets have never been attacked by Wolves during a game, and 30 seconds later, Wolves will show up and attack the team. <laughs> he just needs to shut up constantly. He alone somehow cost them games. You know, I guess Keith Hernandez and Ron Darling, we could keep them because, you know, until a time that we don't need to care about the 1986 Mets, which might be never. Um, so that's uh, that's a big problem. So they were owned by the Wilpons, Fred and Jeff Wilpon, who uh, really wanted to own the Dodgers, but settled for the Mets. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I guess Fred Wilpon wasn't the worst, but he did get involved in uh, Bernie Madoff. And after that, the Mets were basically uh, uh, operating at a loss and kind of a money laundering operation for the next 10 years. Uh, his son was a big time creep. 
But uh, I guess they uh, enough people hated them, and Fred Wilpon was getting old, so he decided to sell the team to Steve Cohen, who is uh, famous for um, the, the GameStop uh, thing that happened a couple of years ago. He's a quadruple... He's disgustingly rich. You know, he's been... They've had four general managers since he took over. Everyone was excited because they're like, oh, a Mets fan uh, runs the team now. Maybe it's not good. Have you read what Mets fans tweet on uh, on Twitter? I don't think any of them should be running the team. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. Um, you know, I mean, maybe it'll all work itself out, but it's been real bad this year. And uh, other than 2022, it's been nothing but losing uh, in disastrous fashion. There's been four different general managers uh, in four years, three different managers, and uh, what else? I don't, I don't even know. But they got a new scoreboard, so that's worth it, <laughs> I guess. Um, social media is dying. Uh, Instagram, in particular, remember Instagram had like a solid, uh, like twenty twenty two, even early twenty twenty three. Um, you know, people would see your posts. People would interact with you. You'd get views and likes. Now, it does not matter how many followers you have. Nobody is seeing your stuff. If you go on Instagram, your feed is like, ad, 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 post from somebody from three weeks ago. Ad, ad, ad. You know, I, I, what did they, what, have they like gone out of their way to destroy the website? I just don't really understand. And uh, being in stand-up comedy, stand-up comedy, uh, you know, stand-up comedians use Instagram to, uh, I guess, connect and network. But a lot of it's, you know, someone uh, meeting you. Ah, oh, yeah, let's follow each other on Instagram. Great, cool, followed you back, LOL. And then you just never interact with this person again. Why did we do that? You can't like a single post. I don't care about you. I just saw you for four seconds at a comedy club. It's so, so ridiculous. And there's all these comedians who are like running scams to get followers. Like there's this comedian. I'm going to name her. I don't give a crap. I don't even know her. She's followed and unfollowed me on Instagram like five times. Her name is like Maya DiGiorgio or Maya. I don't know what her name is. Throw a picture. No, maybe not. But <laughs> she's followed me and f unfollowed me on Instagram like four times. One time she followed me liked several posts and I was like, okay, I'll follow you back. And then she unfollowed me again, like a week later. Like what, what, what kind of sickos are these people? Um, you know, there's a couple other people who do that. They do that. You follow them back and then they unfollow you. And then boom, they have like 200,000 followers, but only get, you know, a hundred likes per post. Um, Instagram took all their energy and put it into threads and the only use for threads seems to be talking about how terrible Instagram is. So what? It, there's no social media site worth a damn. Like, it's why I'm still on Twitter, because at least Twitter, despite new ownership and a new name, uh, it's kind of just the same thing. Any person who is like, ah, Twitter's bad now. Buddy, you haven't been on this website long enough. This website's always been bad. It's filled with the worst people who are just yelling at each other at all times. But sometimes there's some funny jokes and even some good information. So who's to say, really? Um, you know, and then Facebook is what it is. And then TikTok doesn't really seem real. <laughs> you know, I'll post a video on TikTok. Sometimes I'll get a decent amount of likes. Half the accounts don't look legit, but I don't care. Uh, they want to shut TikTok down because, you know... Uh, they were saying too much information that young people were hearing that wasn't the, the right information, uh, you know. So they want to shut it down because, uh, you know, all these young people are getting, you know, politically mad about the Israel-Palestine situation uh, as, as, you know, they probably should be and uh, as their right to be. But, of course, uh, you know, the government got mad. So uh, shut down TikTok because, you know, it's not a viable news source. Yeah, because, you know, all these 16 and 8 year, 18 year olds are going to delete their TikTok accounts and then go watch MSNBC or CNN or Fox or something. Like, please, uh, we need to make a new TikTok. <laughs> That's what it is. So 
Anyway, I've had this year, first of all, I've really enjoyed doing this show. I hope some of you have. Please leave some comments on this video. I was We were doing really well with the comments on the last episode. I think I only got like two comments. What the hell, people? Step up your game. Um, <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, I this year has been very weird for me. I, I had my biggest month financially, my biggest week financially, and also just some of the worst lows possible. This week was supposed to do two shows, uh, Friday night and Saturday night, uh, two decently paying gigs, and they both canceled because reasons. One, the guy immediately rebooked me on another show. Can't get too mad. The other, uh, they just canceled the show because the venue forgot to put up flyers. What are we doing? Why don't do a show? Or <laughs> don't even try to do it. Don't try to do anything. It's all a mistake. That's really the message here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I, I, and it's fun because like, I've been doing this a long time. I like to reflect on, uh, things, you know, uh, I used to, uh, not, not the king, king of Long Island. That's me. I'm the king of Long Island. Pete Davidson, king of Staten Island. I'm the king of Long Island, but I immediately abdicated my throne. Um, you know, so when I was coming up, you know, in comedy in like the late 2000s, early 2010s, you know, the big dream was to perform at uh, Governor's, to be like a working comic at Governor's on Long Island. It was the first place I did a real show at. Um, then sometime around like 2010, they, uh, you know, they were merged, not merging, but, you know, they were getting all the comedy clubs on Long Island under one uh, Governor's umbrella. And they decided to uh, open the books and <laughs> get a couple of the uh, younger people on Long Island, who everybody likes, to, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, doing spots at the club. And I was chosen as one of those people, which was, like, a really cool moment at the time. Uh, the other, out of the other three people, two of them don't do comment anymore. Uh, I'm not even sure if one of them's still in the state. But, <laughs> so, see how well those decisions worked out. But, uh, but, yeah, that made my life. And I remember the first time I did, like, my first official, like, Thursday night showcase spot at Governor's. It went amazing. And I was like, yeah, this is it. And, you know, and then you just, you were in and you started to do, you know, you would do Thursday and Sunday spots at like all the Long Island comedy clubs. And, uh, but it was also like kind of a sickness because you felt like I had to do these spots. And then if you didn't get spots, you're like, oh no, what have I done? You know, and it got to the point where like, I would turn down paid spots because I'd be like, wow, I'm booked to do an unpaid spot at Governor's that night. Sorry. <laughs> Only to, you know, work there for 10 years and then uh, have them just not completely forget I exist because if I'm there, they're very friendly. But, uh, you know, have, uh, send emails being like, hey, here's some dates I'm open. And I just get a response that says, thank you in all caps. Should I respond? You're welcome. That's like the worst thing you can get. Uh, if nothing is more demoral, when you send out avails to get booked at like a club for a weekend, uh, it's either like no response. Um, hey, I'm working on something. Get back to you. Uh, thank you. What do you? Okay, you're welcome. Just send it out dates if you like them. Um, or, uh, my favorite is when you get a quick response from somebody, uh, like a booker or something or a club and they immediately respond and you're like, oh, that's different. And it's just them saying, hey, I no longer book the club, email this person. <laughs> when people stop booking comedy clubs or comedy shows, uh, they can't wait to respond to you to tell you to go email somebody else. So, so good. Anyway, speaking of comedy, uh, this week uh, completely fell apart, but next week's hopefully is a good one. Uh, I think Thursday night, I'm at, uh, Thursday, June 13th, I'm at uh, New York Comedy Club on the 1015 show, and then uh, Friday night is uh, Comedy Night at Michael's in Island Park. That's, of course, the big one every month we're doing it. Shows have been amazing. You should probably be there. Buy a t-shirt. Um, it's Friday, June 14th, 8 p.m. Call for reservations or just show up. And then Saturday, uh, June 15th, I am headlining the Comedy Basement 
in uh, Bergenfield, New Jersey, 7 p.m. show. There's a flyer on my Instagram. I think there's a QR code you can uh, scan for tickets. Go to those shows. And then I'm at the end of the month, I'm on another trip with Matt Vita where we're going to uh, Maryland, North Carolina, Virginia, and maybe one other surprise location. Uh, so tune in to find out. Uh, next next month, uh, next month, next show, I guess I'll have a guess. And uh, any any anybody deserve a shout out? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> so thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you can be notified the second I upload a video. Old Joe Pontillo all the time. Uh, all right. Uh, goodbye.